Hi there. In this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about pH and pOH, and then we'll go into the effect of strong acids and strong bases on pH and pOH as well. So let's begin by doing a few definitions of pH and pOH. And this corresponds to section 16.3 to begin with. So we're going to look at pH and pOH. pOH is less common than pH um, in terms of calculations, but we will need it in this course. So let's begin by thinking about concentration of hydrogen ions. So let's imagine that you have a container and it has liquid in it, water, liquid water. And you put an acid in there, you pour an acid. Now remember the Arrhenius definition of an acid is that when you dissolve it into the water, it forms hydrogen ions or protons. That's the simpler kind of model compared to the Brownstein-Lowry. That's what we're gonna use, that, use for right now, okay? So the idea was that you put an acid in there and you start producing H plus ions, right? Which are tiny little ions. Now there's going to be other ions in there that are negatively charged to balance the electrical charge of the acid, but the point is there's H plus in there. Okay. Now we could also do it in terms of the Bronsted-Lowry model. In this case, we would just notice that you know when you put the acid in there into this into the water, the acid is going to form hydronium ions, H3O plus. And this is a, an alternate and perfectly good way to think about acids. Okay, again, there'll be a counter ion in there because the water essentially reacted with the acid to give us this hydronium. So we could measure the concentration of the hydrogen ion, right? That would just be the moles of the hydrogen ion divided by the volume of the solution in liters, right? It has to be in liters. Remember, molarity needs to be in liters. We could also do it in terms of the hydronium concentration, which would just be the moles of the hydronium ion divided by the volume of the solution, again, in liters, right? So for example, if we dissolved, you know, two moles of hydronium into four liters, we would have 0 0.5 molar hydronium, right? Now here's what happens. It turns out that concentrations of acidic solutions are usually pretty low. They're less than one. 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.01, 0 0.02, but they range in nature by extreme quantities, meaning that it could be 0 0.1 molar or it could be 10 to the minus 13 molar or 10 to the minus 14 molar. Okay. So the variation in concentration of hydronium that we see in nature is enormous. And so for that reason, it's very common to use what we call a logarithmic scale. Logarithmic scales or log scales are often chosen as a way to mitigate the vast range of numbers that are possible. And the most common logarithmic scale is base 10, which you may be familiar with in terms of sound intensity, which is called the decibel scale. Or you may be familiar with the Richter scale, which involves the energy released in an earthquake, right? These are both base 10 um, logarithmic scales. So we use the same thing for acidity. If the concentration of hydronium or hydrogen ions is relatively high. So when I say relatively high, I mean maybe one molar or maybe 0.5 molar. That's relatively high concentration. 
we're going to have some value that we want to report. And then we might have a value that's very, very low, like 10 to the minus 13 molar. We want the number to be not so different from the higher concentration. So the way we do that is with logarithms. And so essentially what happens is we define this quantity called pH, which is like the potential of hydrogen. And we're gonna define it. I'm gonna define it both ways. Minus the log base 10 of the concentration of the hydrogen ion, or an alternate method would be, or an alternate definition would be minus log base 10 of the hydronium concentration. So either one, either of those two are perfectly fine. Notice there is a negative in there. And the reason the negative is in there is because, because the concentration of hydronium is usually less than one, almost always less than one. It can be greater than one, but it's typically less than one. Taking the log of a number less than one gives you a negative value. So if you take the log of 0.1, you get negative one. If you take the log of 0.0 of 0.2, you get um, is it 0.7, I guess, 0.7. So generally, we don't want to deal with negative numbers on a scale. It's not useful to have a scale that is most of the values are going to be negative. Um, so what we do is we put the negative in front. So we just put an extra negative in the front. And that changes a negative into a positive. So if you have 0.1, you take the log of that, that's negative one. You put the negative in front of it and that makes the negative one a positive. So it's just a way of changing a negative number into a positive. Now, sometimes you can have a number that's greater than one. <clears throat> and so when you take the log of the number that's greater than one, it is positive. Then if you multiply it by the negative, then it becomes negative. So it is possible to have negative values, but most of the values that you see will be positive. Okay, so let me show you how this works. This is log base 10. And I'm gonna just go ahead and write a few numbers here for you. So I guess the way I'll do this is I'll put on the top here, the concentration of the hydronium in molar units, right? So 0.1 molar. If you take the log of that and then change the sign to a net, you know, change the sign. That's what the negative in front means. It doesn't mean make it negative. It means change the sign from whatever it is. You get 1.0. In fact, I'll write 1.00. If you have 0 0.01, 0 0.01, you get 2.00. If you have, now these are getting pretty small, right? So I'm gonna put them in scientific notation. 10 to the minus three is 0 0.001, you get three. 10 to the minus four, you get four. 10 to the minus five, you get five. 10 to the minus six, you get six. And so forth and so on. So you see what's happening? Every time the value goes down by 10, the pH goes up by one. So I hope you can see the pattern that as the, as the concentration gets smaller, right? This is lower concentration to the left. The pH gets higher. So a higher pH corresponds to a lower concentration, right? Okay, now it may not be intuitive, but that's the way the scale works, okay? So let me show you a couple of calculations here. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, let's calculate the pH of a solution with concentration of hydronium equals 2.4 times 10 to the minus six molar. Okay, how would we do that? Well, it's pretty simple. pH is the negative log of the hydronium concentration so that would be the negative log of 2.4 times 10 to the negative six, okay? The only thing that's issue with that is how do you do that on your calculator, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to bring up 
this here. There we go. All right, so hopefully you can see this. Okay, so 2.4 times 10. So you go EE -E means times 10. That's the double E sign. And then minus six, I'm gonna do it with the plus minus sign here. Okay, this is, an, this is a, a MacBook I'm using. So that's the standard scientific calculator. It's the same on the iPhone. Um, it's the scientific calculator that's on the iPhone. The I, well, it doesn't actually come on an iPad, but, but whatever calculator you're using, that's one way to do it, okay? Now, I've entered in the number 2.4 times 10 to the minus six. The notation they put here is E minus, which I don't like that notation. The E, the little E there means times 10 raised to the power of negative six. So now I'm gonna do the log base 10 and see how you get a negative number. Like I said, the log of a number less than one is negative, but the pH is the negative of that. So now you multiply it by minus one. So times one negative, and that will give you your positive value. Most of the time your pH is gonna be positive because most of the time the concentration of hydronium will be less than one. So how do we round it? Well, it, essentially with the way it works is the number of significant digits that you start with in your calculation. So if you have 2.4 times 10 to the negative six, that's two significant digits, two in the four. The significant digits are after the decimal place. So we would round this to 5.62. The five doesn't count as a significant figure because it's essentially the measure of the zeros in front of the two and the four. So two digits would be 5.62. You'd round that to 5.62, okay? That's how, how you do that calculation, okay? Clear that. So let's take a look then at an actual problem on Alex. Okay, and this involves pH. So interconverting the pH and hydronium ion concentration. Each row of the table below describes an aqueous solution at about 25 degrees C. Complete the table that is fill in any missing entries in the second and third columns. Round your entries for a concentration of hydronium to two significant digits and your entries for pH to two decimal places. Two decimal places means two digits past the decimal point, okay? So notice that for A, they give you the hydronium and you wanna calculate the pH, right? So let's try that one. It's 8.5 times 10 to the minus six, we wanna find the pH. Okay. So 8.5 EE means times 10 raised to the power of whatever comes after it. So negative six, so six negative. Okay, then you take the log, then you change the sign. Now I just, you could say, look, you're multiplying by minus one, which is what I did in the previous example. But if you're multiplying by minus one, that's the same thing as changing the sign. So just hit the plus minus and change it. So now it's 5.07. Two significant, if you're doing pH, two digits past the decimal point is what it says to do. So that would be 5.07, okay? Seems reasonable, right? Let's look at the second part of that one. Now the second part, here they give you the pH and they want you to find the molarity. Now I haven't shown you how to do that yet. So we'll come back to that part. We'll do that next. Let's do the third part. Third part, again, same idea. They give you the concentration. Notice these concentrations are usually less than one. 6.0 times 10 to the negative 11. Find the pH, right? So hopefully you remember the definition of the pH, negative log of the concentration of hydronium. Oops. Sorry. So let's bring up our little calculator here. Okay. Let's clear it. So 6.0. That was the number times 10 to the negative 11. So see how I did that? Six 
I put just put six, but 6.0 times 10 to the negative 11. Take the log of it and then multiply it by minus one. And it's 10.22, okay? Two significant digits past the decimal point. So there you go. Now the middle one, that one, um, so notice what the numbers come out to, six, 10, five, that's one of the reasons that pH is such a popular calculation. You get a number that starts off as 6.0 times 10 to the negative 11, and you end up with a number of 10.22. And 10.22 is easy to remember for most people, right? So like if you talk to a biologist and they say, oh, the solution is pH 10.22, they immediately can kind of think, oh yeah, I'm gonna compare that to another solution that's pH seven, seven versus 10 versus four, right? Some enzymes work better at pH four, some enzymes work better at pH seven, right? But you know, 10, you know, three times 10 to the minus five versus seven times 10 to the minus 12, that's not as intuitive, right? Our brains don't generally work as efficiently with those kinds of numbers. So that's one of the reasons that we use pH, okay? So let's come back to that second part. The second part involved giving you the pH. So I'm gonna go through this one with you. So here they tell us the pH is 7.57. And they want us to determine the concentration of hydronium. That's what this, that second part is about. So how do we do that? Well, I'm gonna come back to our definition. pH is the negative log. And I'm not gonna put the 10 anymore. Generally, if you write LOG, that means base 10. There are other base, um, log where actually in kinetics, we talked about the natural log, right? That's a log base E, um, log base 10. Generally, people will put LOG for that. Okay. So, how do we get the hydronium? We just have to do it. It's just algebraic manipulation. Okay. So, the first thing is if we're trying to get what's in here, what's in that parentheses, right? So, I'm going to multiply both sides by minus one and that'll make it negative pH on the left and it'll make it log of hydronium concentration on the right. right. That's the first step. The second step is we have to get rid of that log. And if you remember back to, to kinetics, we said that the natural log of e to the x is just x because e to the x and ln of x are inverse functions. Likewise, e to the ln of x is equal to x. So if you were to take E to both sides, you would get rid of the LN and you just get X. We can do the same thing here. We just have to do 10 to the X. So 10 to the log of X is just equal to X. So we just need to do 10 to both sides. I'm, I'm gonna go through the 10 to the log of hydronium. I'm gonna show you this intermediate step. It's not magic. But the 10 and the log are inverse functions, so they undo each other. So you end up with hydronium. And there we go. So our definition, our, you know, this would be one way of defining it. You could define concentration based on pH. What is a concentration of hydronium? Oh, it's 10 to the negative pH. That would be the definition of, hydro of concentration of hydronium. It could be a definition, okay? So 10 raised. So what you're doing is you're taking the, remember this is called a base at the bottom and this is called an exponent at the top, right? Right, so you could have like e to the three. This would be the base. This would be the exponent. Three would be the exponent, right? Um, X squared, right? This would be the base. This would be the exponent. Well, here, the base is a 10. So that's why this is often called a base 10 problem. And then the exponent is negative pH, okay? So all we gotta do then is just substitute in 7.57. Remember the pH is 7.57. The negative is part of the definition. So we're gonna put the negative in there no matter what. Then you write the pH, which is 7.57, and that'll give you your hydronium concentration. So how do we do that? 
how do we do that on a calculator? Well, I'm going to show you. So I'm going to go 7.57, but we want it to be negative. So there's our negative 7.57. We want to do 10 raised to that. Well, there's a 10 to the x function here. There it is right there. What this says is take 10 and raise it to x, which is up here. This is what x is, negative 7.57. Oops, I hit the wrong one. 7.57 negative 10 to the x. And there you go. Okay. So I'm going to count the zeros, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then eight. Looks like you have to go over eight spaces to get to the two point, right? So 2.69 or 2.7 times 10 to the negative eight. So 2.7, I'm rounding it, 2.7 times 10 to the minus eight. Okay, and that's going to give you a pH of 7.57. Okay, so let me show you a little bit about, um, and you can just watch that over a few more times and you'll get it. I just want to point out some terminology. If we are at pH 7, so this is the pH scale here, that corresponds to 10 to the minus 7 molar hydronium, right? This is referring to hydronium. This is called neutral. So a solution that has a concentration of 10 to the minus seven molar hydronium has a pH of 7.00, that is called neutral. If we're going to, you know, I'm gonna go this way, eight, nine, 10, so forth and so on. Remember what happens as the pH goes up, the concentration of hydronium goes down. Right? And you just keep going as far as you want to go until it's limited. This greater than seven, when the pH is greater than seven, this is called a basic solution. or alkaline, alkaline, like an alkaline battery, right? Alkaline batteries are basic solutions, generally they involve basic solutions. If you're less than that, less than in terms of pH, if you're below seven, you're more acidic. So if, you, know, you can keep on going, right? But This is called an acidic solution. Okay. Remember, let's refer back to what we talked about in the previous video. Hydronium concentration times hydroxide concentration is equal to Kw, which is equal to 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14. Okay, so what happens is if the concentration of hydronium is greater than the concentration of hydroxide, that's acidic. If the hydronium concentration is less than the hydroxide concentration, this is a basic solution. And if they're equal, This is neutral. Okay, and remember the math. We went through the mathematics of that in the previous in the previous video about the numbers, right? When we're at neutral solution or neutral pH, I should say, the hydronium and hydroxide concentrations are equal to each other, ten to the minus seven molar. Okay, when you're in a basic solution, essentially the hydroxide is higher concentration than hydronium. 
So the hydronium will be less than 10 to the minus seven, which would be here. This is less than 10 to the minus seven. And when you're in acidic solution, it's more than 10 to the minus seven, okay? So that's one type of problem. And I wanna show you the next type, which is showing the relationship between pH and pOH. So let me um, bring this up. Interconverting pH and pOH at 25 degrees C. Notice most of these problems are at 25 degrees C. An aqueous solution at 25 degrees C has a pOH of 13.93. Calculate the pH and round your answer to two decimal places. Very easy calculation. I'm going to show you why. Okay, We're given the pOH. We want to find the pH. It comes back to that, again, that Kw. Kw at 25 degrees C is 1 times 10 to the minus 14. And remember, that value is due to the hydrolysis, or rather the autohydrolysis of water, right? Let me remind you, two waters react to form one hydronium and one hydroxide. And so the Kw for that, because water is a liquid on the reactant side, concentration of hydronium concentration of hydroxide, a product, right? And call it Kw for water. We know the value, one times 10 to the minus 14. So there's a relationship between hydronium and hydroxide. As one increases, the other one has to decrease because the product must remain constant, okay? X times Y equals seven. X cannot increase at the same time that Y is increasing. If they both increase and you multiply them together, you're gonna to have an increase, which you can't have if they're equal to a constant, like seven. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take the log of both sides. I'm gonna take the log of Kw equals the log of, I'm gonna put this in parentheses now, hydronium times hydroxide concentrations, okay? Now, funny thing or interesting thing about logs is there's a rule, the log of x times y is equal to the log of x plus the log of y. Hopefully you remember that. So if I'm taking the log of the product of hydronium concentration times hydroxide concentration, I can change that to the sum of the logs of each. on the right side, right? Because the log of x times y is equal to the log of x plus the log of y. Now what I can do is I can multiply the whole equation by negative one. So I'm gonna take log of kw and multiply it by negative one, which gives me not negative log of kw. And that's gonna give me negative log of hydronium plus negative log of hydroxide. Now that might look a little awkward to put plus a negative, right? Plus a negative is just negative, but for us it's useful here. And here's why. This is the definition of pH. And this is going to be called the definition of pOH, which I haven't shown you yet. pOH is just like pH. pOH is just negative log base 10 of the concentration of hydroxide. And it follows mathematically the same rules as pH. As hydroxide concentration increases, the pOH gets smaller. Now, here's what we have. Negative log of Kw is equal to pH plus pOH. Now we have something mathematically very simple, x plus y, right? And there's no logs in there, it's just P, right? So pOH, you know, seven plus four, well, actually not seven plus four, uh, 10 plus four, okay, things like that. And here's why, why it's 10 plus four, not seven plus four. Kw is one times 10 to the minus 14. So if you put in 
one times 10 to the minus 14, and you take the log of it, you get minus 14, and then you multiply it by minus one, you get plus 14. So minus the log of kw is 14, 14.00 if you want to put in some digits. This is a very simple relationship. Now, the question is, do I need to show that? Do I need to show that negative log of kw is 14? I'll show it. It's easy enough to do. Okay. 10 to the minus 14, negative log of that I'm claiming is 14. So let's try it. Now, when you're doing the EE, if you just do 0 EE 14 negative, it probably won't work because really what you're telling the calculator is zero times. And what is zero times anything except for infinity is zero, right? So you have to kind of tell it what I mean is one times 10 to the negative 14. So I'm going to put one times 10 raised to the power of negative 14. Now I'm going to take the log and then I'm gonna multiply it by minus one. And there you go, there's your 14, just like I claimed. The negative log of KW is a very simple number. Be interesting if it were 10, I guess we could define certain things as to make it 10, but it turns out to be 14, okay? It's the exponent essentially, 10 to the minus 14, the log of that is 14. So, uh, or more minus 14. So there, there we have a very simple relationship, okay? Remember it. Remember that relationship. And I'm going to put it over here. You have pH plus pOH is 14. And you can put 0 0.00 if you want. But remember, this comes from this equation here. It's really the same equation, just instead of having exponents, instead of having powers of 10, We've gotten rid of the powers of 10 and made them counting numbers. So we have pH plus pOH is 14, okay? That's very useful. So if I know the pH, I can calculate the pOH, right? Suppose I say, hey, you got a solution and the pH is 8.2, zero. What is the pOH? That's very easy. You would take this equation and you would say pOH is 14, minus pH, right? You just subtract the other one. So 14 minus 8.20, and you get, what is that? Uh, 5.80, assuming that it's 14.00, okay? And now you got your pOH, okay? The pOH scale, you know, is, is, is useful in terms of the calculations we'll do later, later in the chapter, in the next chapter, but it's not that useful for kind of intuit in, intuitiveness. So this is our hydroxide scale. So again, if you're at 10 to the minus seven, that's a pOH of seven. And if you go to 10 to the minus eight, that's eight. And if you go to 10 to the minus nine, that's nine. And if you go to 10 to the minus 10, that's 10. You can keep going up 11, 12, 13, 14, maybe even 15. Same, now here's what happens. This corresponds to a concentration. Again, this is hydroxide. We're talking about hydroxide, not hydronium. This is essentially a measure of how much base is in the solution, hydroxide. So the smaller the concentration gets, the less basic it's gonna be, right? If I have less base, it's less basic. If I have more base, it's more basic. So this is becoming less basic or alkaline. If I start going to higher concentrations, then you start getting acidic, I'm sorry, basic, more basic. Okay, less basic this way, more basic this way. And remember, just like with the hydronium, if you're right at seven, that's neutral. So 10 to the minus seven molar hydroxide or pOH7 is a neutral solution. 
Once you get to higher concentrations or lower POHs, it now becomes basic. Again, come back to this equation right here. If you put in 10 to the minus seven here, then this one has to be 10 to the minus seven, right? 10 to the minus times 10 to the minus seven is 10 to the minus 14. So it's neutral at pH seven. It's also neutral at pOH seven. So neutral pH and pOH are seven. If it's acidic, then the pH is less than seven and the pOH is greater than seven, right? Come back to this scale. If I say the pH is two, that's acidic, the pOH has gotta be 12, right? Because two plus 12 equals 14. So once you get a pOH greater than seven, that's acidic. Now, again, you generally don't think in those terms. You generally think of pH, right? pH is two, that's acidic. pH is 12, that's basic. If it's a basic solution, then the pH is greater than seven and the pOH is less than seven. Okay, and you can show this seven to yourself and you can kind of see, you just put in different numbers and you'll see that that's the case, okay? So let me show, let me bring up the last problem. Oh, actually, so we haven't done this one. So let's do this one right here. Okay, aqueous solution at 25 degrees C has a pOH of 13.93, calculate the pH. 13.93 is the pOH, right? So if the pOH is equal to 13.93, find the pH. That's easy. 14 equals pH plus pOH. They gotta add up to 14. No matter what, those two have to add up to 14. So the pH would be 14 minus the pOH, which would be 14 minus 13.93, which is 0 0.07. By the way, that's very acidic. Why? Because the lower you get, the more acidic it is. If you're at pH 7, then that's neutral. This is a pH scale. You know, once you get down to like, you know, that's almost zero, right? 0 0.07 is like right next to zero. This is very acidic. Okay. If you're around like, you know, six or six and a half, that's, you know, it's still acidic, but only barely. You're pretty close to neutral. Okay. A little bit above seven and you're still pretty much neutral, but a little bit basic, right? Acidic, basic. Okay. So there's that problem right there. And there's one more problem, which I'll go over here. So this is kind of a fun problem. Some of these are nice and fun to do. pH calculations are fun. Making qualitative estimates of pH change. Each row of the table below um, describes an aqueous solution at 25 degrees C. The second column of the table shows the initial components of the solution. Use the check boxes in the third column to explain the type of initial solution. The fourth column describes the change in the solution. Use the fifth column to predict how the change in the solution will affect its pH or change its pH. So solution A has water. Water, pure water, by the way, is neutral, right? And sodium hydroxide. Sodium hydroxide is a strong base, so it should be basic, right? Water's neutral, but if you put a strong base in it, it'll become basic. Now you're gonna add sodium nitrate. Now sodium nitrate's not an acid or a base, right? Sodium is, is it's not, there's no hydrogen in there, right? So it's not an acid. So it's not gonna have any effect on, on the pH, right? If you add an acid or a base, that'll affect the pH. But if you don't add an acid or a base, it should stay the same, NaNO3. Refer back to the previous video on the strong acids and strong bases. Water, pure water. Well, pure water should be neutral. Add Ki. Again, this is not an acid or a base, so it should not affect the pH. It should be the same. Water and sodium hydroxide. That's a strong base, so that should be basic. Add HNO3. Now, notice what happens. That's a strong acid. 
So if you have a strong base, you should have a basic solution. But if you start adding an acid, what happens? The acid starts to react with the base. So it should change the pH. Now you have to go back and think about what direction it goes. The more acid you add, the more acidic it comes. The pH should go down, right? Remember, more acidic, lower pH. Less acidic, higher pH. So if you're adding an acid, it should go to a lower pH, okay? Last one, water, that should be neutral. Add HI, HI again, a strong acid, so the pH should be going lower, okay? So there you go. That is your um, section 16.3. Oops, did I just lose? Nope, I didn't. Um, which is the pH scale is the name of that section. So in the next video, which is section 16.4, we will look at strong acids and strong bases and their effect on the pH, their effect on the acidity of the solution. Those are nice, fun problems. Then in the next video, we'll look at weak acids. And then the next one, we'll do weak bases. Then we'll get to conjugate acid-base pairs. And then finally, we'll do a little bit different. We're going to talk about Lewis acids and bases, which is an important topic as well. Okay. So um, thank you and take care.